Mr. Jin was in the Shenyang Workers' Cultural. Twice a week after work, meetings on cutting tools are held. Mr. Jin is the central figure in the study group. From different factories in the city of Shenyang, young, enthusiastic workers gather together. The study meeting usually lasts until around 9 o'clock at night. Neither Mr. Jin, who takes the role of leader, nor the young workers will receive any overtime pay. Rather, the meeting is sustained by the aspiration, the desire for progress which each and every one of them has. Mr. Jin, who looks forward to meeting with the young people and talking over matters of technology with them, explains a technical point. Earlier, he said, In the past, I worked as a lathe operator. Now, together with other comrades, I'm engaged in metal cutting work. I'm now 45 years old. I have experienced two different types of society. If the social system changes, the way of life changes too. It is not possible to bring things unchanged from the old society into the new. In the old society, I worked in order to eat and in order to support my family, and I learned technical skills in order to make a name for myself. After the liberation, and especially after studying the writings of Chairman Mao, I came to realize that if I continued to think in this way, I could never hope to do my work well. Through the study of the writings of Chairman Mao, my heart and eyes have been brightened. I have become able to see things clearly. Chairman Mao teaches us. What is work? Work is struggle. And when we are confronted by difficulties, we must overcome them. Mr. Jin also teaches at an engineering college in Shenyang, the Northeast Institute of Engineering. A worker, good at telling stories of the revolution. Here, he is telling stories of the war in Vietnam. Every day, about 10,000 workers gather in the Workers' Palace of Culture. Some come to study, others simply to enjoy themselves. We can probably say that the workers of Shenyang lead a rich life, for here is a life which in the past could not even have been dreamed of in China. If we were to look at vast China in its entirety, however, we would find that such a life has not yet spread everywhere. The leaders caution the workers strongly against indulging in their own lives in the city and forgetting the peasant villages. The students of a part-work, part-study agricultural school building their own school buildings and dormitories. All of the students come from cities having graduated from first-stage middle schools, which correspond to junior high schools in the United States. 
Having learned scientific agriculture, they will go to live in peasant villages to aid in the introduction of modern farming methods. In China, it is considered especially important to eliminate the gaps which exist between worker and peasant, between town and country, and between physical labor and mental labor. For this purpose, it is considered essential for students not to be limited to book knowledge. In addition to their academic studies, they are expected to learn industrial work, farming, and military affairs. They are also expected to engage in criticism of the bourgeoisie. Here the students are receiving instruction in the pig pen, actual practice in inoculating pigs against cholera. <laughs> A new hog raising method is one of the things of which this school is proud. It is just feeding time, and we see the hogs being transferred from the living area to the eating area. The method of raising them involves clearly separating the living, eating, and toilet areas. The Harbin breed of hogs, those with the black and white markings, is a new breed. This breed, especially able to withstand cold, was first stabilized at this school. With the toilet facilities arranged in this fashion, the hogs can be kept clean and their droppings used for fertilizer without waste. One student said, it makes me feel good to think that the milk we have obtained and the crops we have harvested will make a contribution to the Chinese people and ultimately to the people of the world. It was the end of September with the national celebrations to commemorate the founding of the People's Republic drawing near. We paid another visit to the site where the chemical fertilizer factory was under construction in the suburbs of Changchun. In answering our question, are the peasants cooperating, the factory head said, As this factory, in accordance with Chairman Mao's teaching, will produce fertilizer to be used by the peasants, the peasants regard the factory as something which will directly serve themselves and are extremely happy about it. They are aiding us with their labor power too. They also supply us with the vegetables we eat. The peasants are giving us an extremely kind welcome. The factory not only supplies fertilizer. In the farmer's busy season, the factory workers help out with the farm work. The homes for the factory workers were built on commune land as part of a housing project shared with members of the commune. Many of the workers' wives take part in the productive activities of the commune. Workers from the chemical fertilizer factory visit a people's commune to celebrate the festival held on the eve of National Day. This year is the 17th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. 
and at the same time is the first year of our country's third five-year plan. We are the masters of our own nation. We must fulfill the third five-year plan by our own efforts. From now on, the commune members can come to work in the chemical fertilizer factory, and the workers at the chemical fertilizer factory, as well as their families, can participate in agricultural work, and I think that this is good. The chemical fertilizer factory will aid the villages by producing chemical fertilizer, and we hope that the people's communes will aid our production and construction by growing abundant food. Our meeting today, therefore, will help to bridge the gap between the workers and the peasants, and will strengthen the worker-peasant alliance. We shall strive to produce still more good pickles, cereals, fruit, milk, meat, eggs, and other products, so as to assist industry and to speed the progress of socialist construction. Let us strive hard to carry forward the revolution and to stimulate production, so as to construct as quickly as possible a new China with a modern agriculture, modern industry, and modern culture and science. The exchange of gifts. The commune presents the factory with vegetables, and the factory gives the commune a set of Mao Zedong's selected works. To the accompaniment of a group of the factory workers, young women of the People's Commune dance. October 1st, National Day in Changchun. 300,000 people fill the plaza. In 1949, at the founding meeting of the People's Republic of China, Chairman Mao Zedong spoke in this way. Fellow representatives, we have a common sentiment. This is that our work will be recorded in the history of mankind to show that the Chinese people, constituting one-fourth of mankind, have from this time onward stood up. Heretofore, the Chinese have been a great, fearless, and hard-working people but we have been tardy in entering the modern age. This tardiness is entirely the result of the oppression and exploitation we have suffered at the hands of foreign imperialism and the reactionary government in our own country. For more than 100 years, our forefathers have continued their indomitable and unyielding struggle against the domestic and foreign oppressors without ceasing. Our forefathers instructed us to carry out their will. We have now done as we were instructed.
after National Day. The students and workers going to assist the farmers are conspicuous. Future teachers studying at Changchun Teachers College. The area in front of the Changchun station is filled with young people ranging from college to junior high school students. Many special trains depart carrying students to the countryside. For junior high school students, it is like a picnic. It is impossible for them to undertake full-scale agricultural work at their age. Rather, they are expected to learn from the peasants and from their experience in the countryside. These Changchun tractor factory workers depart in a large group with tractors taking the lead. While the students will stay in the villages for some time, many of the workers who have their own jobs to attend to will return on the same day. Cities are like grains of millet floating in the vast sea of China's peasant villages. People in the cities go to the villages to aid agriculture, to know peasant life, and not to forget the villages. It is considered useful for leaders and cadres especially to learn the class feeling of laborers and peasants in order to overcome bureaucracy and prevent revisionism. During the harvest season, we visited the Xingfu people's commune again. Autumn in the northeast is short. Every additional day the crops are left in the field will increase the size of the harvest. But if the commune members wait too long and miss the proper time, the frost will fall and reduce the size of the harvest. Watching the weather closely, they wait until the last possible moment and then carry out the harvesting in one massive effort. The Red Guards who came from the cities are given relatively simple tasks, as they are not accustomed to agricultural work. Lunch. Yeah, Mr. Liu, the commune head. The commune cadres are of course required to have a deep knowledge of agriculture, but more than that, a deep knowledge of political leadership as well. Their objective at present is to promote the struggle for scientific experimentation, which is an attempt to have everyday production activities carried out in a scientific manner. 
生产的幅度占了百分之十四五左右这样。看来按照现在按照现阶段的情况，从我们公司。People of the commune building their own agricultural college. It has already been decided that one of the teachers will come from the Harbin Agricultural College. Meteorological observation equipment. Communes in different regions have begun making observations and have benefited from accurate weather forecasting. Digging a well for agricultural use. What is most feared is drought. The commune members are constructing many wells which use electric power to draw up subterranean water. The peasants dig wells as deep as 100 meters. Making hemp ropes the industrial area of the people's commune. Rope making, carpentry, leather tanning, willowing, cake baking, blacksmith shop, there are various workshops. What caught our eye was an iron factory which depended entirely on local effort and initiative. The commune needs iron pipes in quantity to use for wells. Even when ordered from the specialized factory in the city, the goods do not arrive promptly. The factory cannot meet the enormous demand from all the peasant villages at one time. The peasants here started casting iron pipes by themselves. The experience they had gained some years earlier, when they were engaged in small-scale iron making, stood them in good stead. They say that now they even sell products to other people's communes nearby. In the villages, the utilization of water, the introduction of scientific methods, mechanization and electrification are much discussed. All require the support of industry. Yet the power of industry is limited and the villages are too numerous. It is the peasants themselves, therefore, who must break through the confines of their present situation and take primary responsibility for rural development. One of China's major steel factories, the Anshan Iron and Steel Combine. The work to reconstruct the iron and steel mills, which were completely destroyed during the Civil War, was undertaken immediately after the liberation of Anshan in 1948. By 1956, one after another, nine blast furnaces had begun operating. The tenth furnace, built entirely by the Chinese themselves, was completed in 1958. This furnace turns out 3,000 tons of pig iron a day. A factory which makes steel from pig iron. A person at the factory explained that they had adopted all manner of devices to increase productivity, such as strengthening accessory equipment, like the ceiling crane, and shortening the time used for repairing the furnace by improving the fireproof bricks.
rolling mill two steel bars have been placed in the rolling machine at one time this work requires skill before the liberation the chinese people employed here were permitted to handle only unskilled jobs they were not shown the technically more advanced part of the work even skilled workers not to mention technicians could not be created under such circumstances. At present, the mechanical equipment of this factory is operated entirely by Chinese workers and technicians, most of them trained in the last 10 years. product of the Changchun automobile factory is a four-ton truck marked Liberation. Using a conveyor system, the trucks are assembled at a rate of one every three minutes. We saw the Liberation lorries everywhere. We can readily say that it was this truck, made in China, which was most frequently encountered in the villages of the Northeast, as well as in Peking. trucks are sent to places all over China. <laughs> 